Hello and welcome to the bass tutorial for Here Ever After. In this video series, I take you through the entire song to help you not just be able to play the notes, but also offer some production and technique tips so that you can recreate the song faithfully and also just be a better musician. Don't forget that at the end of this video, there will be a backing track. It's got the guitars and the drums so that you can practice your bass part once you're finished with the video. Apparently, I recreated this song so accurately that the YouTube algorithm thinks that it's the original song, which, despite being mildly annoying, does mean I now get to teach you how to play it. And this is one of my favorite songs on the album. It was the first one where I thought, wow, they're actually back. Now, I couldn't find a single tab for this song online, which was quite surprising. Uh, so I've created my own tab for this video so that if you learn by tab, you can play along too. So let's get into the song. I recorded this with my 1965 Fender Precision Bass. This one is my favorite bass for sure. The neck is so old and worn down that it's such a dream to play. Now, I played with the volume knob all the way up and the tone knob all the way up. And I also keep my amp settings always at 12 o'clock unless I'm playing slap bass. You definitely could use a jazz bass for this song. Because we're using a pick, the actual tone doesn't matter too much. The P bass is going to be a little bit beefier, but if you turn both of the pickups on on the jazz bass, you're gonna get a pretty similar tone, so it won't matter too much. I suspect Flea may have used one of his active basses for this track. So before we begin, let's talk about the pick. This is one of the few songs where Flea is using a pick. A little warning, if you're not used to playing bass with a pick, you might find it's a lot harder to keep a consistent rhythm than picking on guitar. And it takes a little bit more strength to keep the pick in your hand. So here's my advice. Number one, do some warm up exercises and warm up your hands beforehand. Number two, don't tense up or you might give yourself a repetitive strain injury and you could be out for months. Trust me, you don't want that. So keep it relaxed. Using a pick with some grip can help and using a heavier gauge pick can help as well. If you find you're tensing up too much or gripping the pick too hard, just relax, take a little break and come back to it in five or 10 minutes. My advice is to start slowly with a metronome and over the course of a few days, build up the speed until you can play for five or 10 minutes without pain. Eventually you'll get the feel for it and be able to play without tension. I recorded this track with both the direct output going straight into my interface, as well as using a microphone on the speaker. If you'd like to know more about how I mix the bass in this song, I did a full live mix breakdown, which I'll post the link in the description below. I'm going to break up today's video into three different parts, the verses, the chorus, and then the interlude slash guitar solo section. So first, let's get started with the verses. song is in G natural minor. And everything we do today is going to be in G natural minor. So the verse riff, we start on G, then go to C, then we repeat that. And then we have a descending rundown. So going from E flat, D, back to B flat. Now a quick note, you'll notice if you've seen Flea play this live, that he actually preferences playing on the lower E string. So instead of playing the C on the A string here, he'll play the C on the E string. Now, completely personal preference. I personally, especially when using a pick, really prefer the sound of the tone on the A string when I'm picking. I also like the ability to slide up to that descending line downwards. And then slide back to the G. I personally prefer how that sounds, and I also think it's easier to keep a rhythm with your picking hand, but completely up to you, it's personal preference. chorus, which is the second part of this song, we have B flat, 
followed by F and then E flat. Once again, Flea prefers obviously to play this all on the E string. Again, totally personal preference, I really just prefer the way that the A string sounds, but you can play it any way you like. At the very end of the chorus, we have the B flat, and then we hold a C for transitioning back into the next part. I'm going to give you a small but important tip to keeping your bass in tune when using a pick and playing high up the neck. Try tuning your bass flat. Usually when we tune our bass, whether you use harmonics or a tuner, we tune it with the string sitting completely straight and being plucked with a small amount of force. But in reality, when we are playing the song, we are always bending the strings. When we hit the bass hard with a pick, we're bending the note sharper. When we move our hands around the neck and stretching across the fretboard, or if you're playing on stage and jumping around, you're going to be bending the strings and playing with a lot more force than when we tune the bass. So if you are tuning perfectly right on the note, the only direction that pitch can go when we're playing harder is sharp, and a sharp bass guitar can ruin an entire mix. So experiment with tuning your bass a little bit flat. I like to tune mine around five or 10 cents flat if I know I'll be giving an energetic performance or if I'm using a pick. Now let's cover the third and final part of this song, which is the interlude in the middle of the song and also the guitar solo at the end. These parts are very similar. So we're basically just following the verse chord progression, which is a G minor, followed by a C minor chord. And then at the end, of the phrase, in the solo section only, we have two bars of the chorus. And that's it, we're basically just stitching the verse and the chorus chord progressions together. So the basic pattern that we're playing in this section is we have a G minor arpeggio, and then we're landing on the C for the C minor chord. In this bar, we are just improvising over the G minor pentatonic scale, so... I'm going to give you the tab of how the studio version is played, but once you're familiar with that and you feel comfortable with it, I would go to the backing track at the end of the video and just have a go improvising over the G minor pentatonic scale when you land on that C minor chord. You can play anything from the G minor pentatonic scale and it will sound good because there's no tension notes. Just have a go yourself. Now you could add in some tension notes to make up the rest of the G minor scale. For example, you could add the second, which is the A, or the minor sixth, which is the E flat. It does sound cool, but just a warning. If the guitarist is going to be improvising and soloing over this section, what they're playing could be a little bit unpredictable. And if you are also improvising over tension notes, it could clash badly. So it's not wrong, but it's a little bit risky. So maybe talk to your guitarist about it before.
Okay, that's the end of the tutorial. I really hoped you'd like it. Please leave me a like and let me know in the comments if you did. Uh, don't forget to check out my mixing video if you want to learn a little bit more about how to mix bass. And until next time, I'll see you guys soon.